What's good with the YouTube? Y'all already know Big Flocker with a convicts reaction, bro. I smash dash and react. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit that bell notification for future fire reactions. Now, this is a message, right? And a reaction to uh, Brendan Gay Media J Hound's video today that he did where he got really personal, man. And um, I think it's real important that I elaborate, man, because I have a little bit of experience on the topic that he was discussing man because it almost was a almost a mirror image of what i went through about three years ago when i first entered youtube man and where i was at in my life now for those that have been following my story for a while you guys probably know how i got into youtube was based around the time of covid and prior to that i was very active in recovery i was very active in service right and that getting into this YouTube stuff, it kind of changed the direction. When I first uh, moved out to Arizona, I was previously working. YouTube was a good secondary income. And I'd work, take care of my son, school, church, all the stuff that I was supposed to do. I would try to do on a daily basis. When I moved from um, California to AZ at that time, YouTube started to become a source of my main income. I was promised a job by a certain individual. I got out here that didn't fall through. And so slowly I started relying upon YouTube to be my main source of income. But when I first came into YouTube, I was more about the message, you know, discouraging people from uh, committing crimes, you know, gang activity and, and whatnot. And I'd also have a message about recovery. I talk about my story about, you know, my son going into CPS foster care, me going into recovery, me being a service, sponsoring men, and doing all the things that I was doing at that time. And um, I went through the same stuff that Renegade Media went through. See, when COVID happened, I quit having those outlets, those resources, those places to get a good meeting. And I would try to sit there and listen to certain things online, or I couldn't do the online meetings. And see, at that point, I was um, feeling distance from the fellowship. And so I wasn't really trying to go to meetings anymore. I wasn't feeling it. And I wasn't, wasn't liking all the politics. And I tried different meetings and I'd get the same result. So, lo and behold, I start coming on YouTube as an outlet to try to help others. Because at that time, my um, spiritual healing process was basically, if I can help other people, it was helping me. And anybody that's been in recovery understands exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever you're feeling down or depressed, stressed out, whatnot, sometimes going out there and just doing something to help others will uh, help you. So along the ways, you know, I was involved in different things and, you know, became a part of a platform where I shared with somebody. You know, um, for a minute, we had a, two, we had a different um, opinion of which way we were supposed to go. See, this channel was originally not supposed to be talking about prisons and gangs and whatnot, but we noticed that that's the only way to get the, the views that we wanted. So we, we would try to do stories that you guys would want to hear, but then have a message behind it. And in the beginning, I, I was all about more of the message. You know, and I wasn't trying to be anti-gang or piss anybody off, right? I would say that those decisions are your own, but I would try to explain the, you know, negative activities that come with that lifestyle. The vices, the characteristic, characteristic defects that we have to work on and, you know, even talked about solutions and what, what helped me out. Along that path, I got lost. I kind of moved out here and, you know, I didn't know anybody. Um, started having certain issues and I didn't have those resources or outlets to try to help myself. You know what I mean? And I didn't have any, any type of... Um, you know, people to turn to, you know, I think it's real important that you have people that you can uh, not only vent to, but seek suggestions from. And, you know, I, I had a few YouTube people I would talk to. And then all that turned into was basically them using certain things that happened in my life against me, which, you know, at the time I had like a different outlook as far as in, on YouTube. I thought that it was almost like the uh, loss, you know, brotherhood that you had from when you were active and shit, you know, the camaraderie and the carnalismo and, it was nothing like that. It was more people just starting to seek to be competitive towards each other or to seek different um, desires. And I wasn't about all that. That's why I used to distance myself from a lot of shit. That's why I didn't go on any of the, like, the retreats. or I wasn't even invited anyways, but I didn't really hang out with nobody. I would keep to myself a lot. 
and uh, you know, then I moved out of state, and I went through the same things that you know Jay Hans went through, but I didn't have anybody to talk to about it. I didn't have anybody to sit there and say, "Hey, Fox, it's gonna be all right, man. This is what you need to do." Instead, when certain things surfaced that that you know I was fucking up, it was used against me, you know, and um, that just goes to show with sometimes the caliber of people that maybe you're dealing with, man, that people will. Uh, Find you at your lowest point, and instead of be there to uplift you, you know what I'm saying? They're there to fucking drag you down, you know? And along that, along that those lines, you know, a lot of shit happened, as you guys already know. You got, you know, the worst thing that could possibly happen is be unjustly slandered for shit that you're not doing or you're not about, and then feel that you're being attacked and shit, and then nobody being there. So with, with Jay Hans' story about what he's experienced, I get it, man. You know, I went through the, the similar things with myself. And um, to this day, I don't really have too many outlets to sit there and, you know, trust people or talk to about issues and, and whatnot. You know, so when he's, you know, telling his story, I get where he's coming from. But I want to let him know that, you know, I see the red flags that are potential warning signs. Just because you're not acting in a certain way yet does not mean that one incident can't trigger something to where... You go off and drink or go off and do something. That's what happened with me. And, um, you know, I, I pray that you find it within yourself to find the outlet to help whatever's going on with you. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with going to a meeting. There's nothing wrong with going to therapy. There's nothing wrong to, with whatever you got to do to better yourself because I'm at that stage in my life right now where I'm doing those things, you know. And there's nothing wrong with me admitting that and because I could easily be you know, go back to what my past life was, you know what I'm saying? And like I said, man, you know, that certain things in your life will change you, you know, alcohol and drugs will create an individual that you don't even know anymore. And you can get lost in the shuffle of life and not realize that the warning signs were all there. And so when I see Jay Hans do his video today, you know, there's warning signs that he needs to pay attention to. And I say that only because I don't want him to go through the same things that I went through. You know, if we're trying to be better human beings and not just for the, the young youths and, and whatnot, but for anybody that's struggling, we got to identify the problems within ourselves because it's real easy for us to talk about everybody else's problems and issues and whatnot. But what about our own? And I commend him for coming on and discussing that because that right there was more for him than it was for anybody else. Because that was helping him express how he was feeling. But you can't block that shit. Because if you attempt to block it, you're going to have reservations that are going to fester. You may have some type of uh, resentments that fester. And then ego's a big motherfucker, man. And just like that, you can throw away everything that you've obtained. You know, uh, like I said, you know, people are, are people in life are just not really... Um, there's not a lot of good human beings out there. Let's just keep it real, man. You got a lot of selfish people. You got a lot of ignorant people. You got a lot of deviant people. And you got a lot of people that just want you to fail. And they'll do all kinds of fucked up shit in the process because they're not happy with their life. They have what you call a spiritual melody, which means they lack a solution to their life spiritually. So therefore, they want to be that, that spiritual fucking blockage they want to be the one that's going to put the fucking wrench in the spoke when you're trying to proceed forward and so my reaction to his video was man like take heed to what how you're feeling you know if you're hungry you're tired whatever it is that's going on with you personally health wise deal with it don't let it get to a certain extent to where fucking it gets out of whack you know what i'm saying because like you said once you take that first um Drink that first hit, that first shot. Yeah, stuvo, man. It's not the tenth, twelfth beer, or the fucking fifth, seventh hit, or the fucking third fucking edit that you find in your fucking vein. It's the first one that gets you there, right? That's why they say you know, one's too much and not enough. It's the same token, you know. All it takes is that first one, and the insanity of of the disease. If you're an addict, like I can tell that he's an addict. You know what I'm saying? Because one addict can know another addict. And the sad thing about it is I believe that the disease grows in that even while you're sober, your addiction disease grows. That when you first start to use, you 
end up right where you were when you last used and everything just falls apart and I felt that I was protected because I wasn't associated with anybody I wasn't interacting with others I was keeping to myself right and all that did was fucking it just built up a lot of stuff inside me that I didn't have any outlet to you know what I mean talk to talk to anybody about how I was feeling or what I was going through and sometimes what you're going through doesn't mean that you're absolutely right but it doesn't mean you're wrong either you're going through something and not having an outlet to sit there and you know discuss it or talk about it or try to find a solution man that shit can fucking eat you up and tear you up you know with myself you know um you know I walked a very um what do you call a tight road recently you know um walking that tight rope because I know how normally I can get and um you know my intentions have always still been good they've always been righteous you know um but there's a difference between living a righteous lifestyle um and living one that's still tainted that's affected by the streets that's affected with addic addiction and alcoholism and the thing is, is you got to put all those things in front of taking that first hit or that first drink because once you do, you don't know if you have another recovery in you. You don't know if this is fucking, you could be six months later, you could be fucking dead, you know, and I get where he's coming from, the change, because you do change. And a lot of times, you know, uh, you start to play the blame game, you start to look for others who are the cause of it and whatnot and it's not an easy fucking path to take because things trigger us you know as an addict you got to understand that you're different than the next man you know there's some people who could party on the weekends or party every once in a while and they're okay as an addict you can't it'll fucking drive you to the fucking ground to where you fucking kill everything that you have going for you all momentum you know and uh, I appreciate Jay Han's honesty because it takes a lot to sit there and, and get up and look at a camera and talk about you're a drug addict, that you have a problem, that you don't like who you become, you know. And my advice to him is this, is don't reach out after it's too late. Don't feel that there's those that you can't go to, you know. I wish I tried to find people to reach out to and I reached out to several people, you know, um, and I didn't get any type of response at that time that I needed to hear. And, you know, that's not to make any excuses. It's just unfortunate, you know, and, um, and that goes to anybody. If you have someone who's seeking help and you hear them and they're wholeheartedly asking you like, man, I got a problem. I got some things I need help with. This is what's going on with me. Don't just turn your back if they're looking for that help, you know. Let them show you where they stand if they need that help. And if they want it, they're going to fucking sit there and, you know, honor whatever expectations that you have. That's always what I've done with people. If you really want help, then tell me, what are we going to do about this problem? What can we do? You know, usually there's an answer. You know, now it's like, like I said, it's like fucking throwing spaghetti at the wall. You got to find out what's going to stick. And sometimes you do things that will have that, that will fix the problem short term. Like I said. I was clean and sober for six years, you know, so I need to look at what happened, what was different during those six years of sobriety. I kept to myself. I wasn't even dating. I didn't start dating until like the last until I was four years sober, you know, then I decided to start dating, but you got to be prepared for real life issues because a lot of it, a lot of it's fucking new to us. Not only are we changing from going from a criminal gang lifestyle we're going into a sober lifestyle. We're becoming different people, different individuals. And it's, it could be one of the greatest journeys with some of the best success you can have in your life. But it can also be one when your expectations don't meet what you expect. Or you get thrown off track. You never know where it could lead you. You know, I went from being around people who had my best interest and really were encouraging and when I came into this YouTube the first six months, nine months, I was attacked a little bit here and there. But out of nowhere, I got attacked hard. And it really fucking made me uh, look at human beings in a negative light, man. Because I was I was at that time, I was, I was seeking help. I was looking for answers. And the people that I turned to were just fucking, they were just bad people. 
they just weren't weren't good hearted. They didn't have that same fucking uh, what do you call it, energy that I had about where I wanted to be in my life and how I wanted to help others. And so when you have those type of experiences, it, it makes you fucking feel uh, you have resentment towards people. Let's just keep it real. You look at people like pieces of shits, you know, because there's people that just are. They'll just prey upon your situation, you know. And um, you know, I'm just I'm just giving Jay Hands a little advice in this video, man, that. I respect what you had to say, but do take heed to the warning signs because they're there and it doesn't get any easier. You know, you're going to have to become immune to certain things and no matter how tough skinned you are, you never know what you got in store, what you're going to be prepared for. It only gets worse. I've been doing this for three years. So, <laughs> you know, listen to what I'm getting at. I've seen relationships on there with people who are fucking close friends fucking get torn up over fucking YouTube. That's how fucking, you know, bad this shit can get at times. But if you really care and you put your ego to the side, I think all of us could be all right. But that said, this is my reaction. Flacco from a convict's reaction and perspective, I'm out.